Your camera has one job and one job only, to capture light. But what if there just isn't enough light? Give me your money. <laughs> Either you let more light hit the sensor through your lens, or you pull up the sensitivity of that sensor, aka cranking that ISO, or you simply just get more light. These are the Candela 60 and 100 watt lights from Rolay, portable studio lights that are fully powered over USB-C and specced out with a few unique features that might put these on your radar. And this is my full review of these lights. Let me do the Gerald Undone move for a second and give you full disclosure. These lights and the accessories were sent to me by Rolay and we kind of have like a partnership going on right now where I make this video for them. There was no money involved and I do not get to keep any of the gear that I got. They're gonna get sent right back to them. Now to test all these lights, I brought them with me on a few photo shoots and a few video projects too. I like this one. <laughs> now following the first shoot that I had with these lights. Action. Alright, let's look at it, how easy it is to set these up now in the wild. This is Henry. As you can see, Rolay did send me two 99 watt hours V-mount batteries, which I greatly appreciated because these hold way more power than your average power bank. But because these lights are powered via USB-C, you can just use any power bank or just any phone charger that you have lying around. Keep in mind that if you don't use the power supply that comes with these lights and instead use your phone charger for example, these lights cannot be used at your maximum power. Because if you have a phone charger that does 30 watt hours, the light can only pull 30 watt hours instead of 100. Since I'm always the one behind the camera, I rarely have any photos of myself, so I thought I'd use this opportunity to get some creative ones, some self-portraits, but I'm bad at taking pictures of myself and carrying all the skew with me. That's why I brought Henry. <laughs> so my idea was to make it a little bit abstract. We used some transparent paper, colored paper, to make it a little bit more red, uh, actually to make it a lot of red. And my idea is to basically be in this field of flowers, which look epic, with, with lights. Like, you know, yeah, that's my idea. Warum lachst du? Honestly, I think the first shoot was a great success. I'm happy with the results. And if you think about buying these batteries, I tested them out just a little bit. The 60 watt at 50% took two hours and 20 minutes to drain that battery, which is insane. That's really bright. Okay. Okay, no, we need a second magic orb. Whoops. Since this is a bigger shooter, I thought I'd concentrate myself on taking the pictures and letting someone else take videos of me, because I'm important. And that certain someone is... Come back. This guy also has a YouTube channel and an Instagram where he sometimes uploads some really nice cinematic stuff. So please go check him out. I absolutely fucking adore his color grading. Black Magic Raw is just, ooh, it, it's so good. It's delicious. I think I might steal this. Isn't that funny? All of the sudden, his dad just pulls out a Rolay Flex, a super old film camera, which Rolay used to produce in the 20s. 
Rolle is actually a company that started making cameras in my home city and I'm super proud of this because people all around the world still use these old big film cameras and it's it's just a joy to see that, that my home city provided something to the photography industry. This time I really wanted to test a really specific scenario, multiple exposures. Are these good for that? So I asked a friend of mine if he wanted a few pictures of his, of his beautiful car. My idea was to get them on a specific spot and just get the lights, get all over it and just snap the pictures, smash, smash, smash them together in Photoshop and easy done. If only it was this easy. All right, since I didn't talk about it last shoot, how to set these things up? Well, I sent their uh, C stands, light stands, I think there are, and they're pretty convenient because for some god of a reason, they're, they're air cushioned, which I find really helpful. Like, so that means that when my light is on here, it will not come crashing down, and that's really important because we have that we have those big lights where I, where I work, we have these big C stands. If you don't screw these in tight enough, they just fall down and that hurts. So these are the lights. They're packaged really neat and tightly. I think, I mean, for 100 watts, this is extremely small packaging. This is it. Look at this. Tiny, tiny, small. Ooh, I like. Over here we have the V-mount adapter, which goes onto the NATO rails, because if, if you didn't know, there's NATO rails all around this light, which is super convenient, I think. <laughs> I don't have much that's NATO. Boom, one click, it's on. You want your V-mount? Another click, it's on. You want to remove it? Boom, it's off. I did find an issue with this. Um, D-tap to USB-C cables, they're a little bit iffy. Sometimes they don't connect properly and then your light just shuts off. You just into the NATO rail, screw it tightly, boom, and now it's on. And then you just screw this on. 100 watts. You want it portable? Boom. Excuse me. And now, boom. Light. Let me give you a tour of what we have in this control thingy. So we have our Kelvins. This goes from 27,000 Kelvin, which is pretty warm. I usually have these at uh, like a daylight, which is 56,000 Kelvin. Uh, we have some effects, some, some basic ones like fire and some bulbs, TV, explosion. Even the welding one, this one was weird. Why the fuck would you have a welding? I don't know who needs this, but it's there if you need it. Thunderstorm, SOS, in case you've been shooting somewhere where you need, you know, to send a distress signal, help. This also does have an app, but currently it's not available for, for Android, only for iOS. But this is addressed and they will, I think they're working on it. So, yay, hopefully we're gonna get that in the future. Let's go to soft boxes. Nerola sent me these, I think, Room, room, motherfucker. Jimmy! Ta-da! Sieht ja schick aus, das Lieder. Was geht? Hi, lange nicht gesehen. Okay, one issue though. Uh, they sent these 45 centimeter soft boxes and one of them already broke. <laughs> It wasn't even the plastic, it was just, you see? Just the metal broke. Mm. Ah, I can see why. <laughs> but a thing that I do love about these is uh, the Bowens mount. You can put any softbox or any modifier on here because it has a Bowens mount. Boom. Voila. Yeah, okay, wow. <laughs> She's super awesome. Mm? I kind of want to use the, the other softbox, but I don't want to break that too. Okay, now we're going to wait for the sun to settle a little bit because we're going to shoot the car at night. Like night, <laughs> at when it's darker. Even though the first softbox is already broke, I just hope this is an exception, but I'm so scared about it that I didn't even open the second one. 
because I honestly didn't need it. Like, oh, I, I just need one. So I'm just using the broken one in case I'm going to break the other one too, which is generally not a good thing, but I'm just going to assume this is an exception. And over two months later, I still didn't use the second softbox. But as I said, I really didn't need to. One problem we had on the shoot is that my stupidity showed again. Let's, let's look a good, let's, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Ah, oh, yes, I am a street photographer. Hmm. Mm. Uh. Well, uh, yeah, that one too, but mostly my lack of planning. I planned this shoot over a month prior and sadly didn't consider that the sun now stays up for longer, so yeah. What, what are you? Leave. Leave. Be gone. The sun wasn't about to go down before we had to leave, which, um, yeah, that's my bad. So we just improvised a little bit and went one floor down where we had a little bit more shadow and we could actually use the lights. Okay, now to the actual process. As you can see, all I did, get the light with the softbox and just paint where I want light to be on the car. That is it. Make sure that you do take enough pictures. I just let someone else press the shutter down. And if you can, you should most definitely do that without touching the camera. So if your camera does have like an app connection where you can take pictures, use that. Also, don't forget to turn the headlights on and off. Maybe some brake lights, depending on what you need. But most importantly, don't move the camera or else you'll have extra work in post and it might just not even fit because you have to stack all the exposures on top of each other and they just don't line up and that's not fun. I got into Photoshop and I have to say, things went out super smoothly. <clears throat> Get the exposure that you want, cut it out, put it on, set the blend mode to lighten. It's like a puzzle, honestly. I had to realign each picture by hand, which was a little bit tedious, but honestly, just you know, put on Spotify and that's it. A few hours and you'll be done. Something that really, really, really fucking annoys me is do you see that side of the of the of the car? It bothers me so much. Two things how you could avoid that in post is either make more pictures, which is more work in post, but whatever, or just have a bigger softbox. At the next shoot, I just wanted to see all these small enough. My room is super fucking small and I just needed a really cool lighting setup for the meeting I was having. So I figured why not just not test these out. Welcome to my crib. So this is my space. This is where I edit. This is where I do everything. Um, yeah, my editing bay is extremely small, but I still wanted to um, record a video here because I wanted to make a tutorial, which sucks because not only do I have no space in the bag for any cool cine lens or anything? I have to have my camera right up in my face, meaning I need to go really wide angle. And since I go wide angle, I don't get lots of depth of field or anything like that. Also, I only have this at four, so I do need plenty of light or a pretty high ISO to get a good looking image, which sucks. Number two, the lighting here is just ass. I have this, this would backlight me on one side, which might be cool for like an edge light or something, but as a key light, um, not that much space, but these things are like really small. So maybe we could fit one in there because this would be plenty of light. This is the 100 watts, by the way. I'm using the 60 watts right now. So I think you can get an extremely good studio lighting, which I want to try out now. <laughs> Setting these up is fairly easy, even in a place where there's as little space as this. And in the grand scheme, I have to say, these are extremely good at studio lighting. It's good for studio lighting. Pretty good, actually. 60 watt is plenty. This is on 50% and it's like at least one and a half arms away from me. And I, and I'm decently lit. By the way, I fucking love this lens. I'll, ma I'll make a video about this one because... Wait, let me, let me do this again. Hi, what up? The thing that I don't really like is that I don't have much separation from the dark background. So let's change that with a little bit of something. I've got these. Ooh, these are some smaller RGB lights even. Mm -hmm. I bought these years ago. 
uh, and I still actually use them quite frequently because, you know, these are just super small. So, that's better. This, this is not optimal by any means, but the fact that I even got anything working in this tight of a space is amazing. Wow. Again, thumbs up. I can't complain at all, especially for the price. Here is the full list of uh, things and how much they cost where I live. I live in Germany. I think these are very, very reasonable. Let's get to a few cons because these aren't perfect. V-mount battery holder for the NATO rails. I think they're great. They're super easy to set up. You just click it in. That's it. If you want to get the VMO barrier out, you just push that rod. It's it's super easy. I like it, but it's just just a touch too much plasticky. It feels a bit flimsy. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. It worked fine, and I trust it with the batteries. It's just you know it feels a little bit flimsy. Another thing that bothers me a lot is the D tab to USB C connector. It's fl it, it's loose. The connection is loose. When you tap it just a little bit, just slightly, like look at this, look. which is annoying because you have to hold the button for like a few seconds for it to turn on again. Which means that you don't know if it did I just knock it out completely? Is it is it connected again? You hold the button and sometimes nothing happens and you have to reconnect it again. You hold it. Oh, okay. <sighs> just a little annoying thing. Oh, the batteries itself I think are really great. Again, for the price, nothing spectacular, but they really do hold long enough. We've been doing this for a few hours now and it's been fine. In retrospective, I think in my experiences, they worked really well. But again, I didn't have to pay for any of it. So take my opinion with a grain of salt, I suppose. By the gist of it, I think these lights in itself are really great. If you just need studio lights and you can mount them anywhere or just put them anywhere, honest to God, really great. If you need to pay a little bit extra because you have to use them on the go, maybe not so much, but I think still pretty great value. Well, if I think about how much money I spent recently on a new lens, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's feasible. Again, any lens you have is useless if you don't have light. So, yeah. Well. No, please, please don't. No, no, not again. Okay. <laughs>